Well, hey there, friends. It's good to see you, and thank you for joining us for our last family Bible adventure of this summer. If you've already noticed, this family Bible adventure is just a little bit different than everything else we've been doing this summer. This summer, we've been sharing with you a video that shares a story for the week, along with a PDF resource that invites you to engage in certain different activities and a prayer model for yourself. Well, this week, given it's our last time together, we thought we would do just something a little bit different. So during this about 15 minute video or so together, we're gonna sing a song, we're gonna hear the story and be reminded of an activity that you all have already been encouraged to be a part of. And of course, close with a word of prayer. So if you don't quite have 15 minutes right now, what I encourage you to do is go ahead and bookmark this video and return to it again with your family when you have the chance to engage fully with everything that we have here. And if you need to just space it out a little bit, if you need to sing a song one day and come back and hear the story another day and have the prayer maybe later in the week, trust me, that's also cool by us as well. It's our hope that you and your family are staying safe and well this summer, especially as we look towards the beginning of another school year. Well, to begin our time together, we're going to sing together. I know that's been one thing I've missed being able to do, not only with my congregation, but also with you all as families. We typically sing all the time around at Camp Fire at Vacation Bible School. And this song that I chose for us to sing today is one that we've sung a lot at Shepherd for Sunday School. And we also sang it a couple summers ago when we had Vacation Bible School together between Shepherd of the Cross and Grace Lutheran. It is Fill My Cup. Pretty simple. Most of us probably remember it, but if you don't, repeat after me for just a minute. Fill my cup and let it overflow. You try. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Oh yeah. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Oh yeah. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Let it overflow with love. It is that simple. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sing that once. Then we're going to sing Jesus Loves Me to the same tune, come back to Fill My Cup, come to Amazing Grace at the same tune, and then Fill My Cup once again. Why don't you guys go ahead and sing with me? Here we go. Fill my cup. joy in our days as well. I'm going to turn around and put my guitar down. So just hold on one minute. I especially wanted to sing that song with you all today because it kind of goes with our Bible story today. We were singing about how God's love comes in and, and fills our hearts and gives us all that we need and all that we need to live on. But I have a question for you first before we get to our Bible story. Have you ever been hungry? I know I've been hungry before, and especially if I haven't ate for a while, I actually get hangry. Have you ever heard of what it means to be hangry? It's actually, you get so hungry that you actually get a little angry at times. Now, I can't say I'm very impressed that I get hangry, but sometimes when we're really hungry, it, it starts to impact us because we don't have enough energy and we don't have enough fuel to be able to focus on what we're doing. That's why we always want to make sure that we're eating our breakfast and our lunch and our dinner, especially during the school year, right kids? Because 
Otherwise, we're not going to be able to do what we want to do and be able to go and play and, and be the people we are. Well, in our story for today, there's a crowd that comes and meets with Jesus. And they've been with him for much of the day together. But it was getting late and it was getting near to be supper time. But the disciples knew this was the case and they looked around and there wasn't anything to give all the people. And so they started questioning Jesus. What were they going to do with all of these people? Well, I invite us to go to our story in order to find out the answer to this question. And if you have a Spark Storybook Bible at home, I encourage you to go ahead and dig that out along with me. And we're going to turn to page 426. Page 426, and it goes all the way to 431. Go ahead and pause this video and grab your Spark Storybook Bible if you have one. Otherwise, you can follow along with me right here on this video. Let's our read our story for today. It's entitled, Jesus Feeds the 5,000. It was a beautiful, sunny day as Jesus and his disciples crossed the Sea of Galilee in a boat with white sails. Jesus had been healing many pe sick people, and many more people of all ages came to see him again that day. Maybe they could hear more of Jesus' stories or see him show God's power through another miracle. When Jesus saw the large crowd of men, women, and children, he asked his friend Philip, how are we going to get enough food to feed all these people? Philip answers, I could not work for six months and still not earn enough money to buy food for all these men, women, and children. The disciples didn't know what to do. Just then, Andrew pointed to a young child and said, here is a boy who has five small loaves of bread and two fish. It is something, but it certainly isn't enough for food for all these people. The boy looked very nervous and he said in a small voice, Jesus, please take my food if you think it will help. Jesus took the five loaves of bread and two fish that the boy offered and asked his friends to have the crowd sit down. About 5,000 people sat in a grassy meadow by the lake that day. After Jesus gave thanks to God, he blessed the five loaves and the two fish. Then he shared the food with all the people who were there that day. All 5,000 people ate until they were full. Now Jesus said, now let's gather up all the leftovers. And do you know what? There was enough leftover pieces of bread to fill 12 large baskets. More loaves and fishes left over than the boy had given to Jesus. The disciples shook their heads in disbelief as they struggled to pick up the baskets heavy with food. The people saw the full baskets of leftovers and began to understand that something extraordinary had just happened. Another miracle. Jesus smiled as he heard the people say, God must have sent Jesus to us. It was a day the boy, the disciples, and all the people would never, ever forget. That's pretty amazing that Jesus was able to feed all of those people just with a little bit of food that that one little boy had given to Jesus. A little bit of an offering. All that he had, and yet, look what Jesus was able to do with just a little bit of this. It's sometimes a little hard to imagine stories like this. I can't say that I've seen a miracle like this where all of a sudden what's on my kitchen table or in front of friends and family turns into a lot more. But this story shows us something and a truth of really who God is and how God does provide for us and how God will continue to provide for us and for all the people in our community and around the world and give us what we need. Just like that little boy, we too are being called and asked to give that little bit that we have to offer. It's kind of like this. Do you see this piece of paper I have? Yeah? 
If I were to ask you how many corners are on this piece of paper, what would you tell me? One, 10? No, of course not. There's one, two, three, four corners. But what would happen if I took a scissors and I took a corner off of this? What would happen if I wanted to give one of these corners to somebody? One would think I'd have less corners, right? Well, let's find out. I'm gonna cut this off. All right, so let's say I'm gonna give this triangle, this corner to you. It's now yours. Merry Christmas. Let's see how many corners we got left. We have one, two, three, but is that it? Four, five. We actually have more corners than what we started out with. In the same way when we give of ourselves, and give of ourselves to the glory of God's kingdom, we actually find that we have more, even more sometimes than we started with, and how we can take what God has given us and make it even bigger. Well, if you've been following along with us for Family Bible Adventures throughout the summer, you know that for the past couple of weeks, we have been collecting cash and coins for the Muscatine Food Pantry. It's like we're the little boy in the story and saying, Jesus, take what little bit that we have and, and use it. Use it for your glory. So for the next couple of weeks, I invite you to take your last offering to your home congregation, whether that be Shepherd of the Cross or Grace Lutheran, or if you're finding us online and you find yourself outside of Iowa, take your little bit of offering to your local food pantry and offer that as a gift of a way that you are giving back and you are loving your neighbor. For Shepherd of the Cross folk, we are gonna be collecting our offerings through the next uh, couple weeks here of, of Saturday evening worship. We worship currently on Saturday evenings at 6.30. So the last time we'll be collecting that offering is Saturday, August 15th. And for Grace folks, my understanding, you guys are worshiping on Sundays. And so the last offering time for you guys will be Sunday, August 16th. So I encourage you guys, Go ahead and bring your cash, bring your coins, whatever you have, even if it's just a little bit. Before you do that, before you bring your offering, I'd like us to have a little prayer time with this money. You see what kind of money I have here? I have a penny. I don't have a nickel, but I do have a dime, I have a quarter, and I have a dollar bill. If you can, go ahead and find as many different coins and dollar bills that you have in your house. And if you don't have some, go ahead and find like a game and, and get out some play money or even just make some. For myself, because I don't have a nickel, my guitar pick is gonna be my nickel, all right? So for every piece of change or a dollar bill that you're gonna offer as a part of what you're gonna give back as a way to love your neighbor, what I'd like you to do is to turn that into a prayer. For every penny, I'd like you to pray for somebody in your family. For myself, I'm going to pray for my parents because I know they're getting ready for another school year and my mom works in the school district. And so I'm going to make sure to pray for her as they begin to continue, not begin to, continue to figure out what school is going to look like for a lot of our kiddos. For every nickel, remember my guitar pick is my nickel, go ahead and find the nickel. But for every nickel, pray for somebody in your extended family or in your church family. I know many in our church family at Shepherd of the Cross, there's some people who are struggling right now. And so I'm going to pray for someone who I know is anticipating surgery in the coming week. For every dime, go ahead and find your dime. What I'd like you to do is pray for this coming school year. Maybe what you're excited about, maybe what you're nervous about. I know for myself, I'm not going back to school as a student, but I'm also preparing for the school year as one who teaches some of our kiddos, and I'm going to pray for the strength and stamina to continue to be creative. And that brings us to our quarter. Go ahead and find your quarter with me. And for every quarter that you have, I'd like you to pray for something within our community, perhaps even for our Muscatine food pantry, or maybe for our community health, or perhaps it's even for the Salvation Army, which I know is doing a lot of different things, or perhaps even for some people in your class who might be struggling right now as they think about getting enough back to school supplies. Think about something within our community that you would like to pray for. And that leads us, last but not least, to our dollar bill. For every dollar bill that you have, 
I'd like for you to pray for something that's going on in the world. I know as I record this video for you, I'm aware that there are some really, really strong storms and even hurricanes that are affecting the southern part of our country. And some people are struggling and now are finding themselves without a home to go back to. And so I'm going to pray for those people who have suffered from strong storms in the past couple weeks. As you bring all of your money to be collected, either at Shepherd of the Cross or Grace Lutheran, I encourage you to think about all those people and all those situations and all those things that you have prayed for. And as you dump that money into a basket or whatever it is there, go ahead and pray for those people once again. It is a way that we can not only offer our resources, but we can also offer ourselves and our prayers as we love our neighbor all the time. I am so thankful that you all were able to join us for Family Bible Adventures throughout the summer. And we pray God's blessings upon you all and during these last couple weeks of summer and as you get ready for another school year. We pray that you be safe, be healthy, and above all, turn your hearts and your minds to Christ, who above all has given you all the love that you need and the world needs. God's peace to you, friends. We hope to see you all in person in one way, shape, or another soon. God's peace to you.